alleged fraud by former Minister of Disaster Management Affairs, Everton Chimurirenji. Those are the headlines in all the news in detail. The police in Nilongo have arrested Prophet Shepard Bushiri and wife Mary. The two handed themselves to the police headquarters this morning. National Police Spokesperson James Karadzela says the police are acting on a warrant of arrest issued by Interpol in Pretoria. The police will now commence an extradition case in court to have the couple back in South Africa where it jumped bail and breached immigration laws. I can confirm to you that we have uh, arrested um, Prophet Shepard Bushiri and uh, Mrs. Mary Bushiri. Uh, this is in response to a warrant of arrest we received yesterday from South Africa. Um, it was issued by a magistrate court in Pretoria um, two days ago. So we received uh, the warrant of arrest yesterday. So in response to the warrant of arrest, we um, launched a manhunt. We were looking for uh, Prophet Bushiri and Mrs. Bushiri. And we are very sure that they um, uh, got wind that the police are looking for them. And uh, uh, this very morning, they um, handed themselves over um, here at National Police Headquarters, Area 30. So we have them here at Area 30, and um, uh, we will record statements from them. Um, thereafter, they will appear before a court of law as um, uh, per procedures. We are reacting uh, to a warrant of arrest that we have received from South Africa. So um, what was indicated on the warrant of arrest, if I may share with you, is that um, the Bushiris are on a trial in South Africa and uh, they are out on bail and um, they have absconded from South Africa. That's what is uh, um, indicated on the warrant of arrest, that they have absconded from South Africa while they are on a trial there. So uh, as we follow procedures that are followed when um, uh, so we, we are in such a scenario, that's uh, the procedures that of recording statements from them, and then we will take them before a competent court of law. So um, it's uh, from the courts that we have a way forward. And earlier we also caught up with Bushiri's spokesperson Ephraim Nyondo, who says Bushiri handed himself to the police to get his safety concerns heard in a court. The prophet came to Malawi on Wednesday last week. And when he came to Malawi, he said he came there to speak justice before the constitution of this country because he didn't find justice in South Africa. And in, in doing that, the process is very long. And one thing he made it clear on Saturday when he was making a public address, he said that he will be presenting himself before Malawi's uh, law enforcement agencies. And what he has done today is just part of that process. What are the views of the Prophet right now? Does he want to be extradited to South Africa or what is it that he wants to happen? What the Prophet wants is justice. And he couldn't find justice in South Africa. So he forced himself to come to Malawi because he understands as a Malawian citizen in this country there's a, there's a justice system that is functional that is fair, that is impartial, and that is just. So all what he wants is to seek that justice. That's what he wants. That's why he's here in Malawi. That's why he's submitting himself before law enforcement agencies, because those are the custodian of, uh, of the justice in this country. That's what he wants. We had reports recently that uh, he has assembled a number of lawyers to start legal battle in the country. Does it mean that uh, he wants to challenge the efforts to extradite him to South Africa? The prophet is in this country to seek for justice. And the process of seeking justice involves uh, legal representation. And legal representation is a right. So he has his own lawyers who are helping to understand and also to negotiate the whole process. So there's nothing like you want to fight this, you want to fight that. No, he's here to seek justice. And justice is justice.
Mala Police Service has interdicted seven police officers who were suspected of defrauding government 781 million kwacha between July 2018 and June 2020. National Police Spokesperson James Karadzela confirmed the development in an interview saying the seven will remain in interdiction until the case is concluded. The seven, including Director of Finance at Malawi Police Service, Toria Samvega, who have since pleaded not guilty to counts bordering on fraud and money laundering. And yesterday, the police held a memorial service to remember and honor police officers that have died in the line of duty in the past three years. Speaking of the event, Inspector General of Police George Gainja described the 14 police officers as men that lost their lives for the good of the nation. Veronica Gatsakumanja reports. service held a memorial for police officers who lost their lives in the line of duty. These include the police officer who died in the Sundwe police saga. Inspector General of Police Dr. Josh Gainja described the police officers as men in uniform that demonstrated a spirit of patriotism and passion for Malawi. He said their services will forever be honored as they died for the betterment of the nation. Dr. Kainja went further to call on leaving police officers to continue giving it their all when executing their duties and remain united regardless of the challenges they face. According to Dr. Kainja, they should also continue to rely on God for strength. For Zodiac, this is Veronica Katsagumanja. The Center for Social Accountability and Transparency has written the board of the National Economic Empowerment Fund, formerly MEDA, for immediate actions on alleged abuse of funds at the government body exposed by a recent audit report. In an interview today, CISAT Executive Director Wide Kambandira said among other demands, the organization wants all officers suspected to have abused 543 million kwacha and a youth and women non product to be prosecuted. Public Relations Officer for NIF White on Kapasule has acknowledged receipt of the letter from CISAT by his institution. This report for Bowinston Gaimira. A report of an audit which was commissioned by government in August this year with the aim of establishing the status of loan products under the National Economic Empowerment Fund, NIF, formerly known as MEDEF, has revealed that there was gross abuse of women and youth loan. The report has indicated that 543,657,000 kwacha was not used for the intended purpose from April to June this year. It further reveals that 88% of loan files, representing 9% of samples which were audited, had differences between the approved amount and funds which were dispersed. The report recommends a number of measures to be taken by NIF to address existing gaps. Meanwhile, Center for Social Accountability and Transparency, CISAT, wants all officers suspected to have mismanaged funds at NIF to face the law. CISAT Executive Director Willie Gambandira says the organization has since written NIF board chairperson on these and other demands. In the report, uh, we noticed that in other cases, funds that were made for group loans ended up into personal accounts of individuals. And again, we also want um, the board to make sure that they put in place um, proper mechanisms for whistle blowing. In a written response, Public Relations Officer for NIF, White on Kapasule, acknowledged that the board chairperson has received the letter. For so long, some quarters have been expressing concerns on the way loans underneath are managed, with some suggesting that beneficiaries are mostly identified based on political grounds. This is Winston Kaimira for Zodiac in Ilongwe. The country's graft bursting body says it is investigating former Minister of Disaster Management Affairs, Evadon Chimulidenji, and business person Matthias Bonongwe on corruption charges. The development follows a complaint by the National anti corruption Alliance, which called for prompt investigations over Chimulidenji's alleged 100 million kwacha debt with Bonongwe, who was reportedly involved in a deal to supply 110 
5,000 metric tons of maize through the Department of Disaster Management Affairs. Alfred Guta has more. Anti-corruption bureau spokesperson agreed Ndala to the Zodiac Tuesday. The investigations are currently underway. Ndala could not indicate as to when exactly the bureau's investigators will finish the work. She was however quick to say the bureau is treating the matter with the seriousness it deserves. It is difficult most of the time to give date to deadlines to investigations as they are just underway. But uh, as an institution, we are attaching a, a great importance to each and every investigation that we are conducting. And uh, we will let Malawians know when we, that investigation is concluded. National Anti-Corruption Alliance wrote a CB in September this year in which they called for investigations over corruption allegations involving the former Minister of Disaster Management Affairs, Everton Chumulenji, and business person Matthias Bonongwe. Chumulenji has been under fire over late 100 million kwacha date with Bonongwe, who was reportedly involved in a deal to supply 110,000 metric tons of maize through the Department of Disaster Management Affairs. For Zodiac in Blanta, this is Alfred Guta reporting. You're watching News on Zodiac. Let's take a look at the headlines this afternoon. Prophet Shepard Bushidi and wife Mary to appear in court in Nilongwe today. Malomo Health Center in Chisi go 71 to the port of water causing panic among patients and guardians. Malai police interdict seven police officers suspected of defrauding government 781 million kwacha and ACB launches investigation into alleged fraud by former Minister of Disaster Management Affairs, Everton Chimodilenji. Malomo Health Center in GC has gone seven months without potable water, causing panic among patients and guardians. Director of Health and Social Services in Chisi District Council, Dr. Lombani Mutali, says this follows the breakdown of the water pump. The problem has been forcing hospital workers to fetch water from boreholes outside the facility. Give Dupimba has this report. Zodiac understands that the water was at Malomo Health Center in Chisi North follows the bursting of many water supply pipe between April and May in 2020, and it has yet to be fixed. This has been forcing hospital workers to source water from boreholes away from the facility. One of the community members, Gift Harrison Gabalamula, is sharing the concern on how the area has been affected. There is a challenge of water border at our health center. So we are worried because we are not safe from COVID-19. As we speak, the workers at the health center are relying on a community poor. The health center serves a population of at least 50,000 people. Director of Social and Health Services in Nishisi District Council, Dr. Lumbani Muntari, has admitted the problem but says his office is working to fix it. You know, Malomo is supposed to be a community hospital, and there's been a challenge of uh, potable water there. So we do have a partner in the district who works with the, the health sector, AMREF. Uh, they have supported us with the, a water pump that has been already installed at the Malomo Community Hospital. Uh, the only challenge we had was that uh, uh, electricity that can be used to pump this water uh, to, the, to, the health, to the community hospital. Uh, so uh, we are trying to rectify that one uh, as a short term. We are trying to identify a, a place or a structure that has got electricity that we can tap from uh, to be used to pump this water. Gift to Pimba, ZBS, NGC. University students in the country have called on government to develop measures that can accommodate innovative ideas from students if the country is to develop beyond 2045. Representative of the students, Ifram Zuwaya, said this in Nilong on Tuesday during a youth dialogue organized by the United Nations as part of its 75-year celebrations. The UN resident coordinator, Maria Jose Torres, committing to force ideas from the students. Minister of Information, Gospo Kazako, highlighted the importance for Malawi to evaluate how it has benefited from the UN and what can be done to strengthen the relationship. And Afim Lampa filed this report. On Tuesday, students from eight universities across the country gathered in Lilongwe 
as one way of celebrating 75 years of existence of the United Nations. During the event, the students dialogued with policymakers, which particularly mirrored on how best the country can utilize their knowledge and capabilities for national development. During the ceremony, UN Resident Coordinator Maria Jose Torres said the UN is committed to creating a platform for students, adding that innovative ideas from the youth can hugely contribute to the UN's goals beyond 2045. Representative of the students, Ephraim Zwoya, noted a lack of opportunities as an obstacle for them to contribute to Malawi's development agenda. We have been given a platform where we have to voice us to the, to the world and also to give our ideas on the future which we want. Minister of Information Gospel Gazako cautioned on the need to reflect and weigh what Malawi has achieved from its diplomatic relation with the United Nations so that we can move forward as a country. What is it that we are benefiting from the UN? I'm not saying we are not benefiting, but I believe that we can do much, much better. Sometimes uh, there are so many uh, inadequacies in our relationship, and the people might sometimes just run around and use the word, uh, you know, bilateral relationships or diplomatic relationships. No, it's about people. The 66 university students brainstormed in areas of human rights information, communication, technology, among other things. In news from across the borders, Kenya's government has ordered an investigation into the theft and sale of babies following a BBC investigation into the black market trade. The announcement came after BBC Africa Eye revealed children were stolen to order from a Nairobi public hospital. A hospital official used legitimate paperwork to take custody of a two-week-old baby before selling him directly to an undercover reporter. A government minister said the culprits would face the full force of the law. The investigation by BBC Africa Eye also uncovered a trade in children stolen from vulnerable mothers living on the street, as well as the existence of illegal clinics dotted around Nairobi where babies are sold for as little as £300. That's about what we had time for in this edition of news. And before we go, a look at the headlines. Prophet Shepard Bushiri and wife Mary to appear in court in Nairobi today. Malomet sent the NGC go seven months without potable water, causing panic among patients and guardians. Malawi police interdict seven police officers suspected of defrauding government 781 million kwacha. And SCB launches investigation into alleged fraud by former Minister of Disaster Management Affairs, Everton Chumulilenji. Log on to our website, zodekmalai.com, for more on these and other stories. Remember that washing your hands regularly with soap helps stop further spread of COVID-19. Good afternoon.